<laughs> Where are we, Natalie? We're at a car museum. We're at a car museum. Yeah, we are. At the end of this, we have to choose which car we're going to take home. I have a job to do. She has a job to do. She's getting the B-roll. No one cares. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Off the top of my head, I think it's Tim Allen, John Travolta, Martin Lawrence, and William H. Macy. Imagine that on top, it would have a big Statue of Liberty. The Breaking Bad tour. Los Poyos Hermanos. Yep, close enough. Good morning for the start of day eight on our trip along Route 66. We are headed from Santa Rosa to Albuquerque today. Uh, if you're watching last week, we just wanted to update you that the uh, wildfires were all sorted overnight. It did take them hours and hours and hours. It was all over the news, especially our local news. They had fire crews come in from all around, from eight different places, I think, to tackle it. Uh, what the news reports were saying is that actually in the, uh, they did actually kind of put it out. And so they all kind of went, okay guys, it's good to go. And then it sparked back up again and then it got completely out of control. So we were evacuated from the hotel. We did find another one up the road. Not as nice and more expensive, but whatever. Uh, you know, we're safe, everyone is safe. I don't think anyone was hurt at all. So uh, that was good news. Anyway, we have a cool place. We are going somewhere. Actually, we're taking a detour off Route 66 today. Uh, if you know the route and you uh, like your movies, you may well know where we're going. So. Uh, stick around, let's roll the intro and we'll get on the way. Where are we, Natalie? We're at a car museum. We're at a car museum. Yeah, we are. Uh, I love the car museums. Anyway, it's a car museum, auto museum, Route 66 auto museum, and curio shop, and I'm not really sure what that means. Um. Something to do with curiosity? <laughs> Who knows? You know, let us know below. So we're gonna go have a look around here. I'm very excited. Natalie has allowed me one auto museum on this trip. <laughs> and this is it, so I hope it's good. We look, check the reviews and it's really good. So we're gonna go in. Luckily, our honorary brassiere for three weeks is John, and John is also a motorhead, so we're gonna have fun whilst Natalie goes and sits in the corner. Natalie can look yep. after the crush helmets. Which isn't true. <laughs> she says she doesn't like it, but you always love these places when we go. I have a job to she do. She has a job to do. She's getting the B-roll. <laughs> so if the B-roll sucks, it's her fault. Uh, right, the deal is, at the end of this, we have to choose which car we're gonna take home. Yep, sounds good. Okay. Yep. And then you'll buy them for us. Okay. That is for sale for $285,000. Yeah, so we didn't know that actually a lot of these cars are for sale as well. So yeah, that's a uh, Chevy. Don't even know what this thing is, but it is huge. It's like the Chevy C10. We had a friend, JP, who has a Chevy C10 in, back in the UK, interestingly. It's like that, but on steroids. Don't even know what it is. But uh, yeah, 285000 if you've got some spare change for that. What does it say it is? 1947 Chevy COE. Chevy COE, 1947. Mid engine. I think I found mine. It's a uh, 70s Chevelle. Oh, I don't know, I really like them. I just like the front end shape, the back looks cool, but I'm only halfway around. I could find something. In oh, I think I found something else. Hold on. I thought I found something I'd prefer, but there's nothing in here. There's no seats or anything. So uh, we just found a bike just like John's that he rides. Exactly back home. the same. Exactly the same. Yeah. It's uh, it's actually it's a diesel. So it's a diesel motorcycle. It's pretty big. It's obviously custom made. Uh, yeah, and so it's just like John's uh, SP1. SP2. SP2. Same thing. <laughs> uh, which is what an RC51 over here in the US. That's what they call it. Yeah. An RC51, if you know your motorcycle. But it's actually an SC45. It's a sports bike, it's a V-twin. We joke that it's so big and bulky that it needs a diesel engine to actually run it. So that's what the joke is. Inside joke there, inside joke. Just got corrected by John. Go on. So the VTR 1000 SP1 and SP2, the Americans call it an RC51, uh, but it was actually never designated RC. It's actually an SC45. No one cares. I know. <laughs> Oh, I surprisingly like this. I really like the colour, which is very strange. I never thought I would, but the paint job is fantastic. 
Ooh, should I change this? Okay, so the boys have chosen their final cars, and I will follow them to see which ones they have chosen. Come on then. Okay, turn around. Where are you going? You can't have the same one! It's my car. <laughs> it's the Chevelle. I don't know why. Maybe it's a British thing. Out of all these cars, we both picked that, so... Anyway, the Chevelle. Uh, we've put a load of video up here. Natalie did some B-roll, so we'd be very interested in what your choice would have been. <laughs> yeah, I do like the green like thing, but the pickup, definitely. Yeah, it's I just just like the color. I think but no. Yeah, Chevelle for sure. All right, so this was five dollars per person to get in. They let us dump all our stuff there. They have a really cool gift shop, all Route 66 stuff. I think what makes it in here is uh, like they have the black and white floor. Just the whole Americana, it's kind of got that thing. They've got lots of things scattered around the edge. It's really, really well curated, I think they say. Uh, and so, yeah, I think uh, definitely five bucks worth it. Absolutely worth it. It's not the biggest place in the world, but it's uh, it has some really cool stuff. So yeah, well done. This is great. All right, where are we headed? Oh, oh. we're headed to lunch for somewhere. For lunch somewhere for something very special. It's a very special place to us. Uh, and I wanna know, I, I'm not gonna give it away because I wanna get there and see if you know where it is. So if you think you know where we are, where are we? Santa Rosa. Yeah. And we're going to Albuquerque. We're taking a bit of a detour. If you can figure out where we're going, it's a big movie spot. Uh, then right down below and we'll give you the answer in a couple of minutes. Before we go, Natalie was just making fun of me because I can't talk today. I'm really struggling to get my words out. So I apologize if I'm stuttering and stuff. Right, onto the special place. I said it, I said it. You said it. Alright, so as usual, we're gonna throw a sticker on the window. The lady was busy, so I didn't ask her. I hope she doesn't mind. So if you come here, check out our sticker. Take a picture with it. Tag us. Hashtag Brazen Brits, whatever you want, just so that we get to see it. Have you guessed it yet? Our film location. Uh, we're in a town called Madrid. Apparently spelled exactly the same as Madrid, like in Spain, but it's Madrid. Uh, and this street is very famous. It was at the end of the movie, I believe. I haven't watched the movie. We wanted to watch it before we came here, but we watched it uh, about a year ago when we were planning. And uh, this is where Wild Hogs was filmed. If you haven't seen it, it's a terrible movie with uh, John Travolta, I can't even think. Oh, off the top of my head, I think it's Tim Allen, John Travolta, Martin Lawrence, and William H. Macy. Sorry, I just had a fly in my hand there. William H. Macy. So this is the bar that they turned up and they had a big fight with the with the bikers. Anyway, it's it. Watch, go and watch a movie. It's quite funny. It should be available somewhere. So we haven't even been in yet. We've literally just rocked up. So we're going to go in and grab some lunch and we're see what we can grab find. Some lunch. Let me interrupt you right there, Lawrence. Sorry, I had to cut Lawrence off, but there was also a car about to run him over. But anyway, just notice this sign. It is not a diner, it is a store. So we're not eating here. Yeah, I'm really hungry. There must be some food along here somewhere. Well, let's go in, see what the store looks like. So I can't remember if I mentioned this before, but uh, actually this place was, they built this, uh, the studio built this specifically for the movie. Uh, and then they actually got to keep the building. They had to put a new roof and I think they had to do the foundation, they built this, then the roof, and so then they had to kit it out themselves because obviously this was a set, it was an actual diner. Um, and they, they obviously put a lot of money into the road so that they could film the road and things. So this is basically just a, you know, I mean, they have tons of everything, all Route 66, all Americana, um, all about the movie. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a ton of things. So I think we're gonna need to buy some, uh, 
some souvenirs so we're going to go ahead and do that and apparently there are two restaurants just up the road so we're going to do this and then we're going to run up the road and, and grab some some lunch We are in Albuquerque. Uh, we've just arrived at the hotel and we're here in good time. It's about four o'clock and we have a few things in Albuquerque that we want to go see. Unfortunately, it's the other side, so it's only like 20 minutes away. We're going to take you on the Breaking Bad tour. So we're just stopping real quick because that house behind me here is Walter and Skylar's house in Breaking Bad. Now we're just literally stopping real quick. They are set outside, that is their house. I'm sure they're sick of people being here. So we're just staying back. We're gonna respect their privacy as we will with all the stops. So very cool. That's where they threw the pizza on the roof. And uh, apparently I read that they've had to put that fence all the way around it because they were fed up with people throwing pizzas on the roof. Um, so I don't know how true that is, but it seems pretty true. But yeah, that's it. She's videoing us as well. I hope we're not in trouble. So, right, let's move on. All right, another fleeting visit here. So can you guess what this building here is? Uh, if you imagine that on top, it would have a big Statue of Liberty uh, with a uh, better call Saul written on it. So that is Saul Goodman's office uh, in the Breaking Bad series. So in the Better Call Saul series, it's obviously set before and he had different offices there. But this is the one he had in Breaking Bad and had like the Roman pillars and things on the inside. It doesn't look like it's anything at the moment. It's kind of boarded up. And so I don't know whether they still own that. Maybe they bought it, I don't know, rather than leased it out. Or maybe it's because they've just finished filming the last series of Better Call Saul. So they've worked into maybe it was set here. Who knows? Anyway, very cool. We have another stop. All right, so we only rode in the same reason I want to respect their privacy, but I did want to see Hank and Maria's house. Uh, so we drove in, we did a quick fly around, and then we went out. There's just a lot of signs around saying no parking, do not block mailbox, all of this lot. And I feel bad because they must be sick of people doing this all the time over the past few years. So hopefully they're happy with that we just drove past but we got to see it in the flesh so that's kind of cool we're big fans of the series all right we have two more stops to go we'll see you then all right if you haven't seen breaking bad real quick it's about a story about a guy he's a chemistry teacher uh, he doesn't get paid that well he has a pregnant wife a disabled teenage son and he finds out that he has terminal lung cancer uh, and so he starts to panic, he doesn't tell his family about it, and he realizes he doesn't have enough money to support his family once he is gone. So, he uses his chemistry skills and he starts making the best crystal meth the world has ever seen. So, it starts off with him, he teams up with other small-time drug dealers, and then it becomes a whole big thing, and you have to watch it. But one of the things he does is he buys a car wash to launder the money he makes from making the drugs. And we're talking millions so this is we are in the car wash that they buy in the series now this is featured all the way through because at the beginning he starts working here he works here after school to earn some more money uh, and then he ends up buying it and so he buys it and this is the car wash now we spoke to the guys we really wanted to get our bikes washed and they don't do bikes so don't come here expecting to get your bikes washed but he said are you here for breaking bad and i was like kind of but I would like to get my bike washed. He said, we don't wash bikes. Feel free to go in, take pictures, wander around. They've got placards everywhere. So really, really nice guy. Kept saying, have an A1 day, which is weird because I don't think this is called an A1 car wash. But anyway, we're going to wander down here, take a look, and then we'll get some clips from outside. And then we have one more place where we're going to get dinner. All right, here we are from the outside, John. How happy are you here? Brilliant, really, really cool. It is cool. Yeah, it's very cool being inside. I wish they kept the interior the same. You were talking about where the desk was and stuff. Yeah, with all the um, yeah, they should have kept it the same. So, Mr. Car Wash, if you're watching this, put it back how it was with that, you know, the air freshener stand and stuff. You don't even have to sell it. It'd be really cool. But I'm surprised. They said they get 20 to 30 people a day swinging by here, and yeah. the series ended like eight years ago. 
people so are still coming. They're still coming, 20 to 30 a day. That's crazy, but now there's better cool saw, so I don't know whether this features in that, I don't know. I have not seen, seen it. The last season is the kind of up to yeah. where Breaking Bad starts. Yeah. So they did Breaking Bad, then they did Better Call Saul, which was like a spin-off that started, what's it called, a prequel, and it's just caught up, so there's a lot of things. I know uh, that last the next place, still got to watch. the next place is in the last season of Better Call Saul, I think. So let's go check that out. All right, here we are. This is the last stop. This is Twisters, which was actually Gus's restaurant in the TV show called, called I've been practicing this way, Los Pollos Hermanos. Los Pollos Hermanos. Los Pollo Hermanos. Los Pollos Hermanos. Los Pollos Hermanos. Los Pollo Hermanos. Los Pollos Hermanos. Yep, close enough. Los Pollos Hermanos. So that's where we are. Uh, this was Gus's place. It was a really good looking chicken place. They do do fast food now. It's called Twisters. They have a whole bunch of memorabilia up inside. Uh, we're trying to overlay some of that. I think Natalie got some earlier. But the only thing is the parking lot doesn't feel like it did in the show. It felt like it was in the middle of nowhere kind of thing. And it was bigger. So I don't know whether they used a different parking lot or wide angle. So it looked like there was more cars. But I remember at one point he was parked right outside here. And he thought he had a tracker on his car. Anyway, I'm just talking about the whole series now. That's not the point of this. We just want to show you all around Albuquerque, do a bit of a tour. It was pretty good. There was some slight traffic. We're in rush hour. We are heading to Chambers uh, tomorrow and we're gonna go and see something really cool on the way. So don't forget to check in next week to see that. Uh, thank you for watching. If you could please subscribe, if you enjoyed this video, hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit the bell button. Uh, if you would like to become a member and support a couple of tits and become a brassiere, then please hit the join button. And thank you to everyone below for supporting us. We really do appreciate it. We will see you next week. Los Pollos Hermanos. Los Los Pollos Hermanos. Los Pollos Hermanos.